Hello, welcome to Off The Shelf Reviews. I wonder if I can make Howling a sixth sense. And I'm Gary. And today we're going to review and discuss Howling 6, The Freaks, which came out in 1991 from director Hope Perello, written by Kevin Rock. Ian, why don't you give us the synopsis? Well, the story follows Ian Richards, played by Brendan Hughes. He's travelling through the desert and comes to a small town, awaiting the arrival of a circus freak show, run by Bruce Payne, playing Harker. When the circus finally turns up, we find out that Harker and Ian may have a history, and they might also be hiding some monster secrets. I had better or higher hopes for this howling movie really this, this one usually appears in the the top lists of of people's favorite howling sequels and at first i was like well there's no clive turner attached to this howling movie yeah. and this is the first howling sequel since the or since the original movie to actually be shot in america oh wow wow and uh, and but then when you look like when the film starts and like the the first one of the first sequences of the film when the character walks into a convenience store and the actors were almost in freeze frame mm. until the, she had passed by and then they sort of sprung to life. I was just like, oh no, oh no, we are looking at the most amateur production I think, I think I've seen in the series to date. Especially when the boom mic is visible in one of the opening shots with the actors behaving the way they are. I'm like, this is going to be absolutely dreadful. Yeah. Uh... What do I say? This is the sixth movie in the series, and I've wanted to die since I knew I was watching Howling 2. You know, I, I gave Howling 2 some credit because, well, it had been there through my teen years. Uh, Howling 3 had mutant kangaroos. 4 was pretty low budget. That was pretty fucking terrible. And 5... Five is just five. And I knew, I knew walking into six, I was just like, this isn't going to be very good. Uh, I just, because nobody talks about it. You know, when, when when we talk about horror series, you know, the howling never comes up and nobody ever brings up howling six, you know, and goes, oh, wow, howling six is a great film. And I can, I can, I can see why, you know, that opening sequence with the girl running through the forest. How do you pad out five minutes of your movie? By filming it all in slow-mo. Right, or editing it into slow motion. Like editing it and the fact that she falls over and then just oh. very lazily stands up and looks around and then starts running again. You're just like, this is, this is terrible. This is, this is just, and we're not, whatever I mean, this is setting up, I'm just not getting. And of course, we don't get to see whatever it is that's pursuing her at all. And you're just like, we're not going to see the werewolf in this film, are no. we? No. Well, I mean... I did read that this was supposedly incorporating certain sequences from Howling 3, the book, you know, Reflections, where the book supposedly has a girl who gets attacked and raped, you know, and she gives birth to a son that turns into a werewolf. I don't really know. I, I Like I said, I stopped after Howling 1. I was like, nope, nope, nope. Um, but then we, we cut to the desert and over the credit sequence, I wasn't too sure if I was going mad or if the film was just poorly shot. But we're following Ian Richards, you know, uh, played by Brendan Hughes as he's walking along this road and he just keeps fading in and out. Yeah. <laughs> I expected him to, to to sort of jump cut as he moved further f along the desert road. Yeah, but no. But then, but then the camera changes shot, and then he then he fades in again. Yeah, you're just like, okay. I know they're trying to establish the passing of time. This is a really long road. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. He's walking down. Yeah, it's just done. It's just it's so sloppy. And we come to the town of Canton Bluff, um, which is your atypical. American desert town which seems to be having you know issues with their orchards the, the the townspeople are leaving because there's a drought going on and so the town's you know collapsing in on itself and you know we're, we're introduced to like the mayor um, and the general hardware store owner you know who are arguing over who's going to be mayor and that's when you that's when I first saw the boom mic in the in the top of the screen and i was just like oh my god it's how bad this movie is edited that the guy must have seen that and gone that nah, we can't one shot only we that can't we can't we're just gonna have to leave that in there and hope they don't notice <laughs> you know and the sheriff 
is just lazing around and he sees he sees Ian looking in the uh, the window of the shop at a poster for Harker's Circus which okay the circus hasn't arrived yet right correct so he knows that the, the circus is coming to this town. Well, yeah, now he's read the flyer. Yeah. But he was heading that way anyway. Right. So he's ahead of the circus. S- right. <laughs> Are you, you're hinting at the later plot revelations here. No, I know, but I. But you, know, you get this feeling that he, he he's wanting to catch up with this circus. That's what I got from him seeing this poster. And the sheriff says to him, like, the sheriff is just like, well, we don't like outsiders. We don't take kindly to outsiders. <laughs> what kind of accent you got? It's British. British? <laughs> you mean like they got there in England? Yes, that's right. Can Bluff's quite a ways from England. And then it's, it's like, well, okay, you know, um, maybe maybe you shouldn't stay too long. Oh, God, I almost died with laughter after this happened because Dewey, one of the local religious townsfolk... He's the priest. He's the town priest. Yeah. Well, you didn't get that because he's not dressed like a priest. True, true, yeah. At all. But he runs a church and he says to Ian, hey, man, you, do you know anything about wood? And Ian's like, yes, I do. He's got a terrible British accent. I mean, yeah, I can't really say much, but... And they jump in a truck and they drive to the local church. And this is where I spotted the boom mic for the second time when I sort of noted the shadow on the floor and was like, oh my God, film, <laughs> just stop it, okay? Because two was a parody, two was a comedy. Yeah, yeah. You know, and they wanted to make more comedy. So I kind of saw this as a comedy. And Dewey says to Ian, like, let's start making the church. Now the sheriff has just told Ian not to stay too long. How long are they building this refurbish in this church? <laughs> well, I mean, we we get the montage. We get we get immediately. We know that the the, the priest's daughter is going to be the love interest for Ian. Oh yeah! Like it's a, you know attraction at first sight. Although as much as these actors can deliver, it's more the film language kind of just going. <laughs> you know, these are the only two young kids in town, so they're going to fuck. Yeah. You yeah. know, and uh, we kind of get a montage as uh, yeah, they start stripping off the, the, the rotted wooden panels <laughs> of the church. They're painting it up. They're the putting on new... They're nailing in song, new boards. Man, the, the song, man. The song that plays. I'm just like, oh, this is fairly, fairly quaint. You know, but yeah, the sheriff does come by and just goes, oh, actually, you're really good with that wood, Ian. I guess it was wrong of me to immediately judge you and try to drive you out of this town. Come and have beers with us all now. It was like a day because you see him with the calendar, doesn't he? Like he marks the calendar like the circus is coming and the next day is the full moon. And after speaking to the sheriff and the sheriff's just like, yeah, come and get a beer. And he's like, no, no, I don't. It's then the day of the full moon. You are not telling me they fucking refurbished that whole church in 24 hours? Uh, I, for me, it felt like a few, at least a, at least a couple it, of weeks. It, at least a week. At least, I'd even say just a minimum of seven days. Let's just keep it religious. It took them seven days to fucking refurbish that church. I'm, only, I'm, I'm just trying to remember because when he saw the calendar, it was at the end of the month that they and the, and, and the with the carnival the carnival yeah. was there but anyway the the full moon is coming and they see the circus turn up and it's it's what it is it's a bunch of people walking along throwing leaflets out at all these town folk you know we this town is I don't know what five people at most. Well, it you felt like that that was yeah. the case, but then when everyone decides to go to this this traveling carnival freak show, there's hundreds of people there. The mayor's just like. Well, in oh, fairness, it's only, it's only a small set though. <laughs> yeah, but there's still hundreds <laughs> yeah. of people there, you know. And it's just like, well, where did all these townspeople come from? And they traveled far and wide, but this is a traveling circus. So I don't know. Oh God, yeah, it's fine. And. We, we obviously come to the realisation that there's something up with Ian because there's the full moon. Um, he, well, he's, he's deciding to pull up, he's deciding to get away. He's deciding to leave, which I was very confused at because I'm like, you've just spent all this time getting to the town with the circus here. Um, and we've been introduced to Bruce Payne as Harker, who is the circus leader. I'm like, Bruce Payne's good, like, 
Passenger 57, Necronomicon, he was all right in. But, you know, he's he's literally got, like, one acting mode. Villain. You know? <laughs> yeah, villain, basically. <laughs> and he's supported by an Oompa Loompa and Huggy Bear from um, Starsky and Hutch. And they've captured or recaptured the alligator boy, Winston who has a bit of a facial deformity and Harker wants to use him in his freak show, you know, and, and, and nobody will laugh at you ever again. They are going to see you for what you are. You are magnificent. And I'm like, oh, okay, so Harker's a good guy? Well, for now. Because he, cause he's, <laughs> he's trying to protect the freaks. He is, yeah. He, you know, he even protects the but freaks. But he is also exploiting them, of course, for a public display and charging them for it. Right. But he is also making sure that they've got a roof over their head and they're being looked after and fed. Right. <laughs> I told you once before, Mr. Toons. Don't let me tell you again. You laugh at him, you laugh at me. Okay, let's just go with that then. And uh, and like I said, the full moon comes up and we get to see Ian's incredible change. Well, before that, there was the almost sex sequence where Ian's making out with Elizabeth and uh, it, it sort of keeps... Like it's like somebody was just lowering the contrast, <laughs> yeah. so it just we ended up with just a big white screen. White screen, and then it cuts back, and he's just like, "No, no, 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 we can't do this. Leave me alone." Yes, it was all in my head, me wanting to have sex with you. Right, and yeah, and then as you said, the transformation sequence, and it's like to the film's credit, like this film has no budget whatsoever, mm. and they did, they did attempt. To illustrate a transformation with cutaways of the foot yeah. elongating. Yeah, it's to not show bad. shots of his claws materializing and, and the fur growing on his face. But then when he's looking at himself in the mirror, I'm oh, like, okay, God. he's halfway to the transformation. <laughs> but no, 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 he's not. That's, that's that brilliant. is the transformation. And he is he's not a werewolf. He is a wolf man. He's a wolf man. I so badly wanted to watch Werewolf Cop. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. When I saw him look in the mirror, I was like, man, I, I want to watch that. And, oh, fucking, I kind of loved and hated Dewey as well. I mean, he, I know, like, we were supposed to believe he's the town preacher, even though he doesn't dress as one. Um, but he is also kind of like the town's imbecile. Because you hear the fucking roar from up the stairs. Ian's like, roar, changing. And Dewey's still at the bottom of the stairs going, Ian? <laughs> Ian! Ian? Ian? are you okay up there i'm like oh my god he's turning into a fucking wolf man like even i i get that and huggy bear or the actor who plays huggy bear um he's he's been he's outside and he's been sent by harker to follow ian because harker knows after a confrontation with ian at the circus that they have a history but he just can't picture his face he can't understand why. And Ian just wants Harker or wants to get away from Harker or or they've got a history, basically. And Huggy Bear goes back to Harker and is just like, You won't believe it, man! You won't believe it! Like it's not it's he's not just a freak, he properly turns. And so they confront Ian on the same night in the dark! Ian comes walking around the corner in ripped clothes like, oh, well, that was a five minute change. That was crazy. I shouldn't be doing that again in public. And Harker just confronts him like, you know, I want you to be part of my show, you know, and, you know, I want, I want you to obviously bring more money in for me. And, and Ian's not having any of it. And Dewey and Elizabeth both come out to confront Harker. 
and Harker pulls out a magic crystal. Oh no, he shoots Ian in the back first, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. He shoots him in the back because that's legal, I suppose, in America. <laughs> he just shot him in the back. And then he gets a magic crystal out and says some magic words, which changes Ian into a wolf. I didn't well, that's even... new. Yeah. <laughs> like, and then we're giving the impression that Ian attacks Elizabeth in rage. Right. Oh, man, the film just... It was one of those movies, again, where I kept having to pause the movie to see how long was left. And then I was really surprised of how long was left. Yeah, we're only like halfway now, aren't yeah. we? Yeah. <laughs> we get another awful sequence uh, where, where Ian's in his in his confinement. They put they put him in like a cell, oh. like in a metal cage. Yeah. Except it's not made of metal. It's made out of rubber. Like there's a sequence where he, he reaches up and he holds on to the, the metal bar above him. <laughs> yeah. And it bends all the way down. <laughs> you get the sequence where he comes up to the metal bar. To, to talk to Harker and then the bars are just flexing. <laughs> Don't pull it too hard. <laughs> I'm like, granted, he is a werewolf. He could bend the metal. <laughs> yeah. But I'm just like, it's just so cheap looking when you look at it like that. And then for the the, the next segment of the film, it's kind of Ian meeting, you know, the other, the other residents of, of the traveling circus. Yeah, he gets the friendship with Winston. He does, a little yeah. Bit. And, and Winston's like, oh, I've, I've made a new friend. I've got this cat. I'm going to call it Winston too. Oh, I really felt bad for that cat. <laughs> I really did. For all, it, all the stuff that happens in this movie over the, the deaths of any of the human people. It's what happens to the cat that really hit me hard. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, Harker wouldn't do anything to harm this cat, would he? he he'll let me keep this cat. Yeah, yeah. And then it cuts to the next night at the traveling circus and everyone's there and they're ready to see the new star attraction. Yeah. The werewolf man. And of course, Ian, he's chained up. You know, he's got his own exhibit. You've got all the people in there eating their popcorn, ready to watch this transformation. I'm sure that was the same alligator boy position that we'd seen, seen earlier they sure. just changed Did, it to stick the i wouldn't be surprised <laughs> now there is interestingly here a very very quick blink in your miss it cameo appearance all right from mary lou the rougarou from the previous movie she is in the crowd watching this werewolf transformation you can spot her she is the one in the black and white polka dot dress so there's like two shots of her right and so we're supposed to say, oh, look, it's after Howl Howling 5? Kind of. She, she's, obviously, she's still out there. She's still out there, right. <laughs> And now she's come to see the werewolf thing. <laughs> but, of course, he uh, he's reluctant to transform, and so Harker has to use his magic crystal to <laughs> incite the passages from something <laughs> and force the transformation. And uh, and everyone's horrified at the makeup. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was his legs I couldn't look at for right. too long. You know, because he's supposed to have these kind of lycanthrope legs that are bent. But yeah. the actor, well, I'm assuming the actor was walking on stilts that just were at a wrong angle. And they just, yeah, it just didn't look right. And, no. And so Harker is just like, oh, he needs to do something aggressive. So he grabs Winston's cat and throws the cat at Ian while he's in the werewolf form and Ian having more control I suppose um, doesn't kill the cat and throws the cat back to Winston which really infuriates Harker and we'd also at this point like on the first night that the circus had turned up the bank manageress or the owner of the bank had stayed behind she's in charge of all the loans and all the money of the town um, and you know she's she's happy that if the town leaves then she gets to keep all the money but she, you know she wants them to thrive as well so that the town does really well and harker kills her off now you might not while watching the film you might not realize she's been killed off but she, he convinces her at the end of the circus night to stay behind and then she's disappeared and it's so shit it's so fucking shit because the movie's trying to coerce you into thinking that the werewolf is the issue. You know, this stranger has turned up. 
it's a full moon, he's a werewolf, people are going missing, you don't see any of this, but it's okay, you just assume it is. But we fucking know it's not, Ian. We know it's not, and we know that there's no, there's nobody really else out there. Until the sheriff, in all his glory, goes through the paperwork that we'd seen like at the beginning, and we'd seen Ian going through as well. Uh, this paperwork of Harker and all these news reports where every time the circus goes to a town, people then end up missing, and so the, the circus moves on, so it must be him. And he'd had that awkward sequence with Huggy Bear by the bin, where, you know, Huggy Bear was throwing this body into, or we, we assumed it was a body, and the sheriff is a bit confused. He goes off, and then he comes back at night time armed with a gun. You know, because that's how sheriffs deal with problems in their town, don't they? They turn up at night ready to just shoot anybody they can. And he comes across the bin and pulls back the rubbish to behold the dead body of the bank owner. It was so shit. Like, they just left her body there. Right. They <laughs> didn't really try to hide it too well, did they? No. And then, of course, Harker turns up and the sheriff's like, <laughs> put these handcuffs on. Yeah, I'm going to handcuff you. And then we get to see the Boom Mike making another cameo appearance. <laughs> yeah, boom Mike was a really good actor in this film. Mate. The Boom Mike was great. It was when he breaks the, the breaks the handcuffs, you're like, oh, right, there's something up with Harker. And the sheriff goes to use his gun on whatever Harker is supposed to be. Now, we don't really see it at this this spot but we it will be later revealed in a, a few later sequences but he the, the sheriff is unable to fire like, yeah his gun jammed was it on safety or yeah, or like no he, bullets or he's, what he's being or is it magic yeah magically not being able to fire the gun because then we watch the sheriff run off slowly and and bruce payne chase him in a first person pov and then we get that same the same repeat shot the yeah. repeat shot that we'd seen at the beginning which i don't know what that is is that et attacking somebody with be, a balaclava yeah. on yeah <laughs> you know because it's it certainly doesn't look like a wolf no or anything i will say though the the sequence when they do find his remains because oh, he's yes. in, he's in the bar i think when he opens up the bar yeah when he opens up the store yeah and uh, his corpse is all mangled up his like rib cage is exposed there's yeah. blood everywhere and i was like oh that's a, a gore effect yeah there's that a gore was, effect in this good. film i was like that's not too bad it didn't make any sense of why he was there no why did they put him there like I, this, again are they trying to hide these bodies now or not i feel like harker was trying to prove that Ian the werewolf was bad even though right so he's he's he he kidnaps him basically he kidnaps the werewolf and holds him in a cage and so Elizabeth and Dewey had gone to the sheriff and said look this is kidnapping and this is what's obviously got the sheriff to go to to the to the um circus and he even finds Ian in the cage yeah he even finds him he doesn't bother to help him majorly he, like Ian escapes later on and Harker had said to Ian, oh, you killed Elizabeth. You you tore her apart limb from limb when we changed you. And so Ian was like completely upset. And it wasn't until the sheriff explained to him that Elizabeth was still alive that Ian's like, oh, my God, I need to stop Harker. Why? Why, Ian? Oh, for fuck's sake, will somebody fucking tell me why? And finally, Ian does have a sit down with Elizabeth because obviously he's madly in love with her and says to her, Harker killed my entire family and cursed me as a werewolf. They came and wiped out my entire family and left me. I survived. They left me like this. With this curse. What? Hmm. <laughs> That's what I was like. I was like, so why, why all the pretense? What? Why come to this town ahead of the carnival? Like, why? The girl at the beginning that we'd seen killed is supposedly Ian's mother because she was holding this weird teddy bear, and it's the one that he's been carrying. And yeah, exactly. Why the fuck is he turning up in this town ahead of Harker just to act like a complete 
fucking imbecile and have no plan to stop Harker at all. Even if you have the slightest suspicion that he may be a werewolf as well, because that's what the movie's kind of given us at the moment. The movie's saying, ha ha, ha ha, Ian's a werewolf and Harker killed all of his family, so Harker must be a werewolf as well. Oh no. Oh no. Well, we had the illusions. I mean, Howling 2 thought it might have been a vampire movie. Now we actually have a vampire in the Werewolf Howling franchise. Mm. And there's, uh, I mean, I will admit, it's it's not a favourite scene, but it was kind of cool, because, like, something fucking happened. Yeah, yeah. Is when the mayor ends up in Harker's I love uh, that caravan. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, he's sat there, and we get the shot of, like, we, we know Harker's turned or whatever, and we see the, the mayor get propped up through the top of the oh, thing. Oh, God, And yeah. he's trying to crawl away, and then he gets pulled back down well, again. That's it. He lifts up this fucking seat thing, doesn't he? And yeah. I'm like, that's, it's, a, co- it's, that's a coffin. Right, because it's coffin. all the soil and worms in there. Uh, yeah, I thought, I at first I could couldn't tell what it was but when i realized i saw worms i'm like it must be a it must be a coffin then yeah, yeah. and then we see this blue thing erupt from it <laughs> and i'm like what the fuck is that and the, the mayor is killed off and harker confronts dewey as well because dewey comes across the newspaper reports and goes ho oh, harker must be immortal there must be dates on there as well showing that harker has never aged i really wasn't paying attention <laughs> and Harker just appears in the room and goes, you don't even fucking know what it's going to be like. You know, he has this cool little moment. And then says to all the townspeople when he goes outside, yeah, Dewey says we're just going to go along and shoot mm-hmm. Ian. All right, okay, yeah. So the, the townspeople all get in their cars and they drive to Harker's um, luxury fucking caravan. And Ian's gone there to confront Harker as well. And he's not there. And when he comes outside, he's surrounded by all the people. All the guns. And Harker's like, go on, shoot him! Yeah, shoot him! And I'm like, does that work? Have they all got silver bullets? It's well, just, I guess not. They're just going to blast the fuck out of him? Like, all right, okay. But, uh, but Ian ends up convincing the others that, like, Harker's the real, the villain here. Yeah, and yeah. And Harker gets really upset and he flips the car. Flips the car and goes... <laughs> just so he can transform from behind it so we don't actually see any transformation. <laughs> it's like... It's like he's a vampire, but somebody's drawn all over his face in a byron. Right. <laughs> it's, it's like he was dipped in an inkwell. Yeah. <laughs> I'm blue, double dee, double down. <laughs> it was so bad. And like, I had sat through an hour and 10 minutes of this movie. There's still 20 minutes to go. And I was just, I was just like, oh my God, none of this series has been any good. You know, I said some really horrible shit about Final Destination and Halloween and and, you know, Resident Evil and, and Night of the Living Dead. I kind of feel like taking all that back because Howling 6, that's, that, this final sequence was just so bad. Like, there was no real good fight choreography here, was there? No, it, it, this no. is the, It's the ultimate showdown now. Werewolf versus vampire. They hate each other. They've got history, you know, and, and now they're going to clash. That's what it was. It was a clash. <laughs> they literally just throw themselves at each other and wrestle for a little bit. I mean, you like look at the choreography of this sequence where where Harker ends up getting old of Alligator Boy and he uh, starts biting him. Oh god! And, and, and then Ian, as Werewolf Man, throws himself at you know at them to separate them, and then he ends up biting down on Alligator Boy. You're like, <laughs> how? how did you do that? How did you do that? Like, What's happening? I was amazed by that sequence. My. Because I got so bored during the movie, I wikied it to see how long it was going. And even the wiki page says he accidentally bites Winston on the neck. And I thought, I have to see this now. And then I watched it and thought, why did you film that for? It was so bad. I mean, Elizabeth had been confronted by the Oompa Loompa, Mr. Toombs. Um, it, it, Deep Roy is his name. And obviously, I think Deep Roy is such a brilliant freaking actor. But it just... Deep Roy. She, she she kills him. And then Callista or Carlotta, the man, the half-man woman, you know, she confronts her and she gets nailed by an arrow. 
uh, by by priest dad. By yeah. priest dad, and I'm like, oh well, priest dad kind of redeemed himself because he was willing on killing Ian, yeah, you know, because yeah. he thought he was the, the the devil. And so yeah, and Winston's used the, the magic crystal to finally turn Ian into the werewolf because he was getting his ass handed to him by the vampire, and then they have this massive huge confrontation, accidentally biting Winston. <laughs> And then he he stakes, uh, he stakes he, he stakes, stakes Harker to the floor, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah, through his through his through his kind of chest through his neck area. Yeah, and Harker's just lying there and is wanting to escape, but then they realise that the sun has already come up because of a tear in the curtain or yeah. in the net, and so he tears it all down, and the sunlight just blasts Harker into dust. It is a horrible effect. Yeah, I've seen a lot of vampires melt in my time, and this was this... I, again for it for its really low budget. It was it was okay. It was okay. I'd like it was Hammer Horror seventies. Yeah, yeah. Worthy. This like, you know, even the CGI fire from From Dust Till Dawn looks better than this sequence. Aren't yeah. they supposed to burn up or something? You know, no, they're supposed to melt like this. And I was I was also dying with laughter when like like Ian picks up Winston at the end of the movie. And he's walking out of the circus with him. And the two of them are kind of walking off. And I'm like, oh man, Winston died. His cat died. And Winston, oh wait, no, they're, they're letting him down. Winston's walking. <laughs> he's fine. <laughs> Winston's fine. Ah. But didn't he just now survive a vampire and a werewolf attack? What's he going to be now? <laughs> Alligator werewolf vamp man? Oh man, he, he's going to be the father of the Oh no, wait, there was no exchanging of bodily fluids. Oh yes, so. that's right, yeah. <laughs> and no magic, yeah. Oh man. And so, yeah, and so Ian and Elizabeth kind of walk off into the desert. No, 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 Elizabeth stays there with her dad. Oh. Yeah, Winston, it's just Winston and Ian that just wander off. Uh, I, th I thought it was Ian and Elizabeth. I gave up at this point. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> Who was Elizabeth again? <laughs> Well, wow, that was satisfying. Ian, is there anything you remember about this film that you actually liked? I had a couple of favourite scenes. I I gotta admit, I missed the third one that Gary talked about in the fight sequence, but I loved it when the boom mic turned up. You know, you really know how terrible a movie is when you can see the boom mic. And seeing the boom mic at the beginning in the general store, um, and then watching it again five minutes later on the shadow on the floor, just made my heart just kind of skip a couple more beats and it made me just stop and think wow i was really harsh on some films that do hide the boom mic <laughs> the sheriff's death reveal yeah like gary said it was like the one only major gory bit in the movie it was quite a cool special effect i don't know why they put the body there maybe to emphasize ian as the werewolf and have him shot um that's not really how crimes work, you know. If you would have, you'd obviously called in the FBI, you know. You'd have told the, the 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 state sheriffs. They would have done an autopsy on the bottle on the, on the body and be like, well, you know, it seems to be man-made claws or something. I I don't know. I'm thinking too much into it. Um, and the killing of the mayor, like when he flew up through the roof and then came back down again. Oh, it was just amazing. <laughs> just just amazing. <laughs> And the cat. I like the cat. Yeah, I like the cat too. Yeah, the cat. <laughs> There's really no favourite scenes in this film at all. Uh, I, I will say the scene that I probably enjoyed the most was uh, Ian and Elizabeth actually going through the carnival, uh, going through all the exhibits when they get to the freak show. Like they you know, get lost you, at one point. And, and you find out that the, the guy's got like a third arm that he hides the ace up his sleeve. Yeah. Uh, you've got the, uh, the, the the headless lady brushing brushing her hair. Uh, you, you've got uh, the lady with the light bulbs, uh, you know, of course, Alligator Man, you know, just yeah. going through all these exhibits when they get locked into a room. I was like, at least it was just something more interesting than the first half an hour of this film has been. When Huggy Bear ripped the head off the chicken was pretty cool. Exactly, yeah. So I thought that sequence was was, was interesting at least, but... Yeah, like it disappoints on on so so many ways. Mm. Uh, Ian, do you, do you recommend uh, Howling Six: The Freaks? I do not recommend this movie, and I 
I'm really sorry for anybody who's sat through the series with us and thinking, you guys are not enjoying this series. And you know what? Part of me just feels glad I've seen it. You know, just to be able to say to people, you know, when people say, wow, the Paranormal Activity movies are shit, I'm like, no, 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 you don't know. Watch Howling 6, then you'll know shit. Watch Howling 4, oh, that's pretty bad. Just, no, just no, no. Nope. <laughs> I absolutely cannot recommend Howling 6 The Freaks. This was just another boring, lame and disappointing sequel. I hesitate to even call this a werewolf movie. <laughs> yeah. More of a Wolfman versus Dracula knockoff yeah. with some decent effects considering the low, low budget. Bruce Payne was the standout performer here, but considering the rest of the cast, it wasn't too difficult. It was, it was embarrassing at times. The only thing this circus of a movie has that works is the effects, the makeup, and the limited gore shots. But again, this has no suspense, no, no real mystery, no. and a lack of atmosphere. It's all just so dull and uninteresting. Boring is what I'd call this. It might have some what-the-fuck moments, but it doesn't make it memorable or worthwhile, including the human oddities. Nothing notable to say about the direction, editing, music, Cinematography, it's all just standard. No imagination, no style, and it's just plain looking. I appreciate that they tried something different with this film, but for me, nothing really works here. No werewolf, poor transformation, little gore, and nothing thrilling at all. You know, this film's tagline was, It's time to howl again? Although we all know that the howling stopped several movies ago. <laughs> Thanks for watching Off The Shelf Reviews. Yeah! <laughs>